January 1996. Tilly, Arkansas, a small rural neighborhood, was home to William Mueller. Mueller was a gun enthusiast and self-employed electrician. His wife, Nancy, homeschooled their eight-year-old daughter, Sarah. Returning from a day of work, the Muellers were confronted by two men in their home. They were dressed as FBI agents but they were imposters. They were after the large supply of weapons and cash that Mueller had in his home. When the 52-year-old Mueller refused to cooperate, the intruders separated the family and tortured them. Nancy Mueller's mother, Erlene Branch, grew concerned when she hadn't heard from her daughter in two weeks. She turned to the sheriff for help. I usually hear from her at least. She explained that the family often traveled to gun shows, yet her daughter always called when they returned. Although the Muellers lived in a neighboring county, the sheriff knew the family and agreed to look into the matter. He checked with local authorities and talked to Mueller's neighbors. Though Sheriff Jay Winters found no trace of the family, people who knew them weren't concerned. For the most part, there wasn't a lot of fear. Most people thought, you know, maybe they had just gone off somewhere and, and wanted to be on their own for a while. On February 11th, a month after their disappearance, a farmer found the Mueller's Jeep concealed and abandoned off the highway miles from their home. Detective Aaron Duval from the Pope County Sheriff's Office was sent to investigate. It was approximately 20 miles north of Russellville, uh, off the State Highway 7, hid behind a brush pile. Uh, I was called out that day, went up there, took pictures of the, the uh, vehicle and the trailer. Inside the Jeep, Duval found Nancy Mueller's purse. It held her wallet and ID. The trailer, used by Bill Mueller to transport munitions to gun shows, was empty. Several more months passed, and the Muellers were still missing. 40 miles from Tilly, an elderly couple enjoyed a day of fishing in a bayou near Russellville. While waiting for a fish to bite, the woman snagged her line. She pulled up an old tennis shoe. A leg bone jutted out of it. Horrified, she cut it loose and went for help. Within hours, search teams combed the bayou organized by Sheriff Winters. They used large metal hooks to drag the bottom. Divers swam the depths. By day's end, parts of a single body were recovered, a murder victim. And the torso had a rock attached to it. Uh, there was a lot of tape on it. The head had a bag of some type on it, duct tape around the head. Uh, very disturbing to us because it was obvious, you know, that that this was a different type of thing than we typically deal with. It was an obvious execution. Uh, it was just some cold-hearted people. Investigators determined it was the body of a small female. They thought it might have been a six-year-old girl who had been abducted several counties away the previous year. When the clothing and size didn't match her description, another possibility became apparent. It could have been Sarah Mueller. 
The next day, two more partial bodies were found. All three torsos had been weighed down with rocks, and each head was covered with a plastic bag secured with duct tape. 